I am Anatoly Zayets. I am from King's College, London, and we are working on plasmonics. And plasmonics is a very broad area of research dealing with optical properties of metals. Probably if you ask somebody how metals are used in photonics or optics, the answer will be mirrors. And indeed, uh, metals uh, made very good mirrors. For example, silver is the best mirror ever. Uh, Everything will change if you start creating metallic nanostructure. If you start structuring your metal film, so you create metal nanoparticles, then optical properties will be completely different. And not many realize that and sometimes it's called even ancient nanotechnology, like a beautiful colors of a medieval stained glass or even Roman time stained glass essentially comes from a colors of metal nanoparticles, the gold, the silver, which are present, pre 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 present in, in, in the glass. Um, these days, now we have um, full control, okay, not full control, but I would say like 80% control of um, nanostructure of metals. We can create uh, metal nanoparticles with given shape and size at will. We can nanostructure uh, metal films with various patterns, uh, uh, whatever we can design, whatever we can be useful. And, but underlying effect is exactly the same like effect that gives color to the stained glass of medieval churches. Because when light uh, interacts with a uh, metal nanoparticle, it excites uh, free electron oscillations inside the metal nanoparticle. Uh, because if it's metal, it's a good conductor, it has lots of free electrons and if and uh, light is incident onto the surface of the metal, these electrons start to oscillate in phase, so they start to oscillate collectively, and then depending on sh shape of nanoparticles or size of nanoparticles, they scatter or absorb light differently, giving um, rise to these bright colors. And actually exactly the same effect that gives uh, colors to this um, stained glass, uh, nowadays used in biosensors. For example, pregnancy tests, you can go to pharmacy, buy it, use it, but not all, everyone knows that actually um, the, the, the change of the color that you observed is related to metal nanoparticles, to gold nanoparticles and to excitation of surface plasmas in these nanoparticles. And in addition to this, there are other biosensors and chemical sensors relying on the same effect, like surface enhanced Raman scattering, surface enhanced absorption of fluorescence. So they all rely on excitation of this collective oscillations of electron inside the metal and by interaction with molecules or other species like biological cells or um, uh, quantum dots, uh, they give change in optical properties that can, we can easily, easily detect. And recently, obviously, there is a big area which is not possible not to mention, it's area of metamaterials and metamaterials is nanostructured um, nanostructured media essentially, it can be dielectric, semiconductors, metals and metamaterials, they work in various spectral ranges from microwaves, teragers to visible and if you're talking about metamaterials for visible spectral range you cannot uh, produce them without um, using plasmonic effects. So all metamaterials that work in visible spectral range in one or the other way, they rely on plasmonic effects and this is exactly what, what we are studying. So first of all, we're designing effects. So the, um, nowadays, um, uh, simulation techniques, electromagnetic simulation techniques are very well developed. So essentially, whatever we can uh, come up with, we simulate first, then nanofabrication techniques, it's also quite well developed. So, and we're trying to think about nanostructures when we simulate them, nanostructures that we can uh, fabricate as well. So we simulate nanostructures, plasmonic nanostructures, and we fabricate plasmonic nanostructures, and at the end we study their properties, we study all those, those effects. Some example of important effects where plasmonics um, uh, you, you cannot do without plasmonics, for example, enhancement of nonlinear optical properties. 
because if you have plasmonic nanoparticles or plasmonic metal film and you couple light to this surface plasma excitation, essentially electromagnetic field is squeezed near the metal surface. So you have localization of the field and at the same time because you have localization, you have also enhancement, effective enhancement of electric field near the metal surface. So it means that uh, fluorescence of uh, quantum dots or molecules is enhanced because field is higher there. Nonlinear optical effects, which depends on higher power of electric field, is also enhanced, even, in str even stronger than photoluminescence is enhanced because field is enhanced there. And by using, utilizing plasmonic nanostructures, you can um, think and design. Um, you can call it nonlinear metamaterials, nonlinear plasmonic metamaterials, because they consist of um, plasmonic metamaterials are combined with nonlinear dielectrics, but you can achieve nonlinear effect with very, very low light intensity. Um, in principle, you can grow down to single photon for four photon levels, and then if you have this very strong nonlinearity, then um, you can think about using this nonlinearity for all optical information processing. Probably the big dream of everyone working in the field of plasmonics that at some point you can devise plasmonic circuitry which will replace electronic circuitry of modern, of modern computers and by doing this you can uh, reduce energy consumption and increase speed, speed of computation and hopefully beat Moore's law. If we send current through metal wire it gets hot, yes? It gets hot because energy is lost. So in the same way if you cap light to uh, plasmons, the surface plasmons, or surface plasmon polariton and metal nanoparticle on metal waveguide, you will have losses associated with this ohmic loss losses in the metal. So this limits propagation length of surface plasmon and this limits uh, uh, quality factor of resonator based on plasmonic nanostructures. So now there is very significant um, attempts to overcome this, this problem either by using new materials that previously were not used for plasmonics like uh, various kind of oxides which may provide lower losses of telecommunication wavelengths or uh, introduce gain into plasmonic nanostructure in order to compensate for, 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 for these losses. And both these directions are very active and hopefully, uh, at least I hope, that both of them they produce very nice results and push plasmonics to really practical practical devices.